여러분 안녕하세요. Hi guys, it's Jane. And I know it's been a really, really long time since I've uploaded a video. 한 3개월 정도 했나? There's been a lot going on in those three months. And as you might have noticed, we changed our sofa, which took a while. 그래서 그것 때문에 촬영을 못 했던 것도 있고 중간에 한번 영국을 갔다 왔어요. 제 인스타를 확인하시는 분들은 아시겠지만 uh, I actually filmed a vlog there, so I'm really excited to upload that very soon. And also, I'm a sophomore now. 그래서 시험이 너무 많아서 꼭 편집할 시간이 없었어요. I'm really excited to be back. And with winter break coming up soon, I think I can, you know, make more videos. 그리고 마지막 조금 되게 서프라이즈가 있는데 저희가 셀린이라는 강아지를 adopt했어요. So Celine is a Cavapoo. She is four months old now. And while I wasn't doing YouTube, we uh, welcomed her into our family. So I think you can look forward to vlogs featuring Celine. 어쨌든요, 오늘의 영상은 This is going to be part 2 of my last video, which I know was quite a long while ago. So if I should recap it, we had gotten to the part where Taejong had, you know, Lee Bang Won, had killed his half-brother, stage a coup, and had become king. So this video is going to be about his reign. So to start off, King Taejong. I know we covered the basics in the last video, so I'm going to jump right in about what he did during his time as king. So one of his first acts was to abolish the privilege of maintaining private armies. So back in the Joseon dynasty, a lot of wealthy, influential 사대부 would have these armies, and it was really bad for the king because if people have private armies, then they can use it to, you know, stage a coup or like threaten the king. So he abolished this because he wanted to prevent large-scale revolts. And in addition to that, he also made the national army bigger. Which I guess was a really, really smart thing to do in his defense, but this, of course, upset most of the court ministers. Taejong, another thing he did was revising the existing legislature and concerning, you know, taxing, you know, land taxation, like those things. The legislative branch was... I don't want to say corrupt, but he did revise that. And he ended up finding hidden land, which is really good for the country, and the national wealth doubled. And then Taejong also created a very strong central government. So basically in the Joseon dynasty, the court ministers often, they had a lot of power over the government, often sometimes more than the king. So they would discuss things amongst themselves and that's how decisions would be made. But Taejong wanted to change this because he wanted the king to have more authority. So that is what he did. He created a more central government. And King Taejong, another thing that I really admire during the things that he did was he created like a petitioner's drum called Shimmungo. So this drum was located like in the palace, like in front of like where the king would, you know, preside. And basically the commoners, like the regular subjects of Joseon could bang on the drum to request for like an audience with the king. So of course it was in the palace, it would be really hard for commoners to be able to bang that drum. But that he thought of it in the first place is really, you know, thoughtful of him. And he did it so that, you know, the people of Joseon could be able to appeal about, you know, the sadebus or the aristocrats, the court ministers, like kind of exploiting their power. And during his reign, Buddhism was a really, really popular religion during Goryeo-shide, which was right before the Joseon dynasty. But during King Taejong's reign, he basically promoted Confucianism as the main ideology. So he kind of shut down a lot of Buddhist temples and promoted Confucianism instead. This is kind of going off track here, but you know, uh, Korea was heavily influenced by China, which is why, you know, Confucianism. And later on in Joseon Dynasty, we'll be able to see a lot more of how, you know, Confucianism influenced Joseon, which is, you know, goes into women, children, you know, the patriarchy, etc. And also, Taejong created the system of Hokpe, which if you watch Sagooks, you'll know, like, they use, this term comes up 
a lot and hopae is basically like a form of identification and they were used to control how you know control movement throughout joseon like the population etc which was really smart because although it wasn't a huge country they hadn't had this system of identification before so this was good hopae was good and Taejong remains a very controversial figure in history because of his rather bloody way of dealing with his enemies. You know, he killed a lot of people to become king. And, you know, even after he became king, there were a lot of instances where he would be remembered as a very, very bloody, powerful, ruthless king. But we can't deny that during his reign, he did make a lot of improvements. He set the groundwork for Joseon to, you know, thrive and prosper in the future, though he did obviously make some mistakes. He wasn't perfect, but a lot of the things he did were good as an idea. And I think with every figure in history, there's a good and a bad, and it it's like up to you what you choose to look at. And today I chose to look at, you know, some of the very good things, the positives that King Taejong brought to Joseon when he was king. And you know, he laid a very solid foundation for his successor, King Sejong, which I'm sure most of you, a lot of you have heard of King Sejong. So that is the end of today's video. And as you can guess, my next Joseon with Jane video is going to be about King Taejong's son, King Sejong the Great. So bye for today. Thank you for watching. And I will be uploading a lot more, so please stay tuned. Bye.